The Lord led his people in hope while the sea engulfed their foes. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus be with you all, and with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, gathered together and watching on our live stream, we're here on this Friday within the octave of Easter, and as we prepare to celebrate and to encounter our living and risen Lord, let's call to mind our sins, our weakness. Let's ask God for his abundant mercy. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ eleison, Christ eleison. You bring light. To those in darkness. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And we pray glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that we may we celebrate by professing the faith we may also express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, By what power or by what means? 
What name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so our response to our our Lord's words is, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, 
They saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, praise to you, Lord Jesus So greetings to all those joining us on the live stream. We hope you are hanging in there and keeping the faith in this time. huh? <clears throat> so here we have uh, Peter boldly proclaiming Jesus, right? We talked about some of this yesterday, that from a man of fear, he has come to this deep faith in the person of Jesus. From, from someone who denied the Lord, he's now a dynamic disciple doing deeds in the name of Jesus. And what he's proclaiming about Jesus is what we also proclaimed uh, during the exalted at the Easter vigil. You know, we say Jesus... Uh, he came back from death's domain and shed his peaceful light on humanity. Our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Right? We're proclaiming Jesus has defeated death. And Peter is proclaiming it before Annas, Caiaphas, the same high priests who rejected Jesus and put him to death. And he's boldly proclaiming to them that this person that they put to death, Jesus of Nazareth, in no other name under heaven can anyone be saved except through him. And it's hard for them to argue because he has exhibit A, the crippled man who was freed and released by the power and in the name of Jesus. You know, throughout history, in the time of Jesus and even now, the threat of death has been used by the powerful as a weapon of oppression, really. Jesus being crucified was really an execution. It's like the Roman authority showing their power. Hmm? But what happens when you have the full force of this threat of death, and yet one person, Jesus defies death itself and rises to new life. It is incredible, this life and power that flows through Jesus, that overcomes all injustice, all oppression, all the weight that holds us bound. Huh? It made me think of uh, Archbishop Romero who said this, I have often been threatened with death. I must tell you as a Christian, I do not believe in death without resurrection. If I am killed, I shall rise again in the Salvadoran people. 
It's amazing, huh? This is the boldness and the faith that this new life Jesus brings, gives to us. The power at work in us is greater than the powers of the world, huh? And now the other unique thing that came to mind about proclaiming this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this person who was rejected, and the word that they use for rejection, we translate as rejection, it literally means when you reduce something to nothing, when you treat something with utter contempt as a zero, you regard something as lacking any standing or value. This is what the leaders did to Jesus. Yet, they were rejecting God in the flesh. And our faith has always proclaimed this dignity that we have as human beings made in the image of God. Every single person bears the divine image and deserves love and respect. So Jesus even tells us that in the poor, in the broken, in the imprisoned, what you do for them, you are doing for me. We're being reminded of this great dignity that we have. Also, why is he the only one who can save us? Well, definitely, he's the only person who's risen from the tomb in all of history. But then it just reminds me as well of someone, I was listening to someone talk about the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. And uh, this is the book where he talks about vanity of vanities. All things are vanity. This is someone who invested his life in so many things and they came up empty. They came up empty. He invested in relationships, education, work, wealth, pleasure, power, position, all of this stuff. But it did not do for him what he hoped for. Because at the end of the day, these things that sometimes we give our lives to will have to end in the tomb and in death and emptiness. There is only one whose light continues to shine even in the tomb. That's why he is the only one who saves and heals. Now, um, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, um, this faith is, there is a process to it, you know. This perfection and maturing in our faith is a process. It reminded me of a story of a young girl who, whose parents uh, had another child. And when the child came home, she said, isn't this child like a bit too small? <laughs> she was expecting someone who would be able to play with her immediately and start talking to her. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and she thought, okay, I'm going to go to bed. And then when I wake up the next day, she'll be ready. <laughs> but we know growth takes time. Development takes time, you know. Fully surrendering to the Spirit of God that blows where it wills, to this life of God in us. We take time to mature, huh? And it's especially challenging for us when we are in a desert time, in a waiting period, you know? Um, like those folks who were journeying after the Exodus, we experience the power of God. Then they're walking through the desert, that time, it takes time to mature. That's the time for growth before we reach our full perfection promise. So, sorry, this is going to be another long one, but let me say a little bit about uh, the gospel, you know? So Jesus had already appeared two times to the apostles, yet Peter decides to go back to fishing, to the old ways, you know, to something that he can control. 
You know, this Jesus that just seems to appear from time to time. It's like, uh. so he's kind of taking the reins, you know. And when he does that, he works hard all night trying. But he comes up empty with nothing. And maybe some of us are feeling that way in these days, you know. Some of you have been working for years and years, and all of a sudden you find yourself without work, and it seems like empty. You almost have nothing to show for it, you know. Um, some people have faced real traumas in their lives that they've been trying to battle and overcome, and they've come to the end of their powers, and they come up empty, you know. And I think this passage reminds us that if we wait for his word, if we trust in him, and if we remain all in with him, we will receive far more than we can ask or imagine, right? At his word, they're able to haul in a catch of a lifetime, right? So Jesus is not just our Lord in a spiritual sense. He's the Lord of all of our life. In him is the light for all humanity. In him is the door to new life and new possibilities. In him, death itself is swallowed up. In him, as we said yesterday, www, the, the wrong our weakness, and our lack of wisdom sometimes in our judgment is all reconciled through him by the gift of his own life, by the food that he provides. He still calls us around the table and gives us a place at the table even after Peter has denied him and has gone back to fishing, he calls all of us around the table to have communion with him. So the question is, are you all in with Jesus? Are we ready to wait on his word? So I'm going to invite all of us, wherever you are, to rise, and we're going to offer our prayers to the Lord. Maybe open up your hands to heaven, and I'm just going to invite you for a moment to just uh, entrust your heart to Jesus again, this one who defies death and who is the light that shines in the darkness. And we're going to offer our hearts and offer our prayers to the Lord. Father in heaven, we ask that on this day, you glorify your son, Jesus. That for all of us who may be walking in darkness, in frustration, in a sense of emptiness and nothingness, you may bring your presence, your power, your light to shine in our darkness. We pray that those who may feel crippled by the weight of their sins, by the uncertainty of these days, may be raised up by the power in the name of Jesus. We pray that for all of us who may have chains of death that bind us, that they may be broken by the power in the name of Jesus. That those who might be depressed, that chain of depression may be broken. Those who might be carrying wounds from years and years of hurt and trauma we pray in the name of Jesus that those chains be broken. Let's just take a moment and now bring whatever else is in our hearts to the Lord Jesus.
Father in heaven, look upon us with your generous love. Hear all the intentions that we have brought before you. And please, in this time of waiting and uncertainty, fill us with your light. Bring us your healing and your peace. Help us to rise up from the places of death in our hearts, in our lives, to the light of life. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And today we especially want to remember at this Mass, as we offer our Mass today, for Graciela Alvarez, the repose of her soul, and for Julie Yazi, for the repose of their souls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also offer this Mass for Eduardo Adrian Gonzalez. So for his intention, we also pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So as we begin our offertory, we invite you once again to please remember the parish uh, to generously offer what you can to help the parish during this time. Um, online giving access can now, uh, you can go to our website for that, blessedsacramenthollywood.org, or on the Facebook page now where we are being live streamed, you will see how you can also help us uh, to continue to generously serve and bring the gospel. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. It's the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, let's come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. It's the fruit of the vine. Work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, please wash my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sins. Please pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Hosea, Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. At this Mass, we particularly remember and pray for the repose of Graciela Alvarez and of Julie Yazi. Lord, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Ignatius of Loyola and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. And so we rise at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer to each other where we are at this moment the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, we behold the Lamb of God. We behold our Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So at this moment, mm, I invite you to make a spiritual communion. We are all joined to Christ as one body to our head. And this is a moment just to call upon the name of the Lord. Invite him by his presence and power by his holy name, and to be with you. Recognize that he is close to you. Recognize that he wishes to bring his light and healing, freedom and peace to you. So just take this moment to invite him in. Jesus said to his disciples, come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Hallelujah. So let us continue our prayer. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Hang in there. I'm sure maybe many of you saw the video we put online uh, yesterday, Jesuits exercising. Even in the midst of the challenges we face, you know, we can uh, bring light, you know, with the help of the Lord. So, Keep the faith, uh, keep on going. Let's continue to be all in with Jesus who leads us out of darkness 
into light. Amen. Um, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.